With the mission of improving livelihoods through creating better economic opportunities in rural communities, the Belize Rural Development Program BRDP, embarked on Phase 2 of its initiative in February 2010. It is funded from a grant of 14 million euros from the European Union, a contribution of 1.2 million euros from the government of Belize, and 800,000 euros from local partners. The project, which concludes in February 2016, has had a major impact on small and medium enterprises through its work with agencies such as the Young Women's Christian Association, the Toledo Cacao Growers Association, the Belize Botanical Gardens, and the Belize Tourism Board. The BRDP2 has also achieved improvements in strategic infrastructure and fostered a stronger policy and institutional environment. Although tourism is a mainstay of the Belizean economy, so too is agriculture. However, the sector has recently faced major setbacks due to disease. Under the BRDP2, cacao farmers of Toledo received assistance to rehabilitate 200 acres of farms stricken with a fungal disease known as Manilia. I have like two farmers here in San Antonio growing cacao, and my father is one of them. So, as a farmer, we also do our milk pan. We do corn, rice, beans, and we also grow plantain, bananas, and other fruit trees. Like right now, it's a biodiversified field I have with lone timber trees, some wood, mahogany, cedars, coconut, and then kind of citrus plants, oranges, tangerine. Yeah. All of them are right there. And when we came here, my father started his farm here. He, we, we chopped the the high bush and then plant rice and then after that we start to plant cacao and then after that when I, when I, I grow maybe I'm 19 years old well I, I decide to, to find my wife and then 20 or 21 I, I came to live here um, I, I, I came here from 1977, then I started to plant my cacao field. But the same I, as I see with my father, I, I cut down the bush and then I burn it and then I plant corn, rice and then after that I, I planted um, cacao among the rice and the corn. And then I plant um, banana and plantain for the shade. In 2007, we did the pilot project here in San Jose, which was affected by Monilia disease. Monilia came in the country, in Belize, in 2004. Then we said, let's, let's do a pilot project to see whether we can control the disease. And the Toledo Cacao Growers Association did a pilot project there in 2007. With a 35-acre plot, before Monilia, 
they were exporting or they were selling to TCG at least 35,000 pounds of cacao. When the disease came and affected the area, they were only selling about 2,000, 3,000 pounds per crop season, improving the area. They were able to improve production from two to three thousand pounds to at least eight thousand pounds per year crop season and that is how TCJ decided to lobby for some additional funding because traditionally our farmers are not used to pruning their cacao TCJ decided to lobby for some additional from funding now to do this uh, rehabilitation and the pruning program for farmers through the European Union and the European Union did approve the funding based on the proposal submitted by TCJ. And today, three years or four years later, the European Union, I guess, are doing an evaluation, which I think you all are doing now, to see the impact of the pruning program. TCJs um, see that we need more cacao. That's why it provides us some seed to, to give us to more plant for more acres of cacao that's why we got I got more four more acres like this one but two acres I transplanted to my son um, two acres so when they see that we got because when we start planted because of my brother Hustino we just started by ourselves by the agriculture project so we we order a seed with agriculture project when we start to plant we plant our own because a um, lot of we are in South Sale we did like that too. So when TCJ came in, they find a project to help us. So they give us some more seed to make our field grow, to grow more. This um, young one um, give me about, I sell about 200 pounds every month. And the old ones give me about 150 pounds every month. The end of the cacao season is up, um, June is the last month and I, I'm not sure when it's going to start somewhere, somewhere in November or December it's starting again and it runs up to June and I'm expecting at least more production this year. Last month then um, we harvested about um, 11 buckets of um, cacao beans. I think that's the height, I'm telling you, that's the height of the production just last month. And just when we go gone back again, we only harvested three buckets. It's coming, it's beginning to slow down. So the three, no, 11 buckets, you could sell it one dollar, one dollar and ten cents a pound. When it's wet, it's your choice. If you want to ferment it, yeah, we learn our fermentation too. And uh, you, you could ferment it and you sell for two dollars and seven five cents a pound dry cacao beans fermented. Uh, organic. In my in my mind, I told my husband that we have to process, we have to find some land, make we um, plant some more cacao, so that doing a chocolate, we have to we have to have um, lots of cacao beans. Yeah. If we have them, that's our own beans. We can buy beans for other people. Yeah. That's why I want to know how to start a business like that. We, we don't try the um, experience for the um, making a cacao, buying cacao chocolate. We have do it, me and Mr. Hustino wife, try to make it and we sell it for the white people. Well, this is my poster and this is how we have been training and just not to forget, so I make it for the, um, this paper right here. You can, uh, this is how we have been training how to make the chocolate. Mm -hmm. We have um, about 70, 71 farmers who have benefited from the program and a total of 271 acres of farms that was rehabilitated then at the time. And we have at least 11 communities that benefited from it. San Jose is one of the major communities, San Antonio, Criquijute, Mayamopan, and um, Santa Cruz. 
those are the few that I can comment on. The objectives of the rural development program are, are to um, alleviate poverty and train rural people um, to do different skills and this fits in very well because most of the people that we are training come from, um, from village communities and um, we're training them in job skills that they can use right away when they finish the 10-week training. It's a nice opportunity to work with plants because like in the, res in the resort itself, you get to combine your plants, you know, maybe you want, you want plants that, that, that are palms and you want shrubs and you want ground covers and there you get the chance, you know, to challenge yourself. Some people didn't know what horticulture really was. Um, some people came here not knowing what plants really are and then the reason why people came to the, to the interviews was, was because, you know, we promoted that this kind of uh, teaching will produce jobs and that's what people are looking for basically jobs at the ending of the of the training some of them would burst into tears saying they came here knowing nothing now they go back with all this information and then we had uh, employers calling us wanted gardeners so we recommended these gardeners to so these employers and about 80 percent of them are doing very very well and um, I've had uh, messages from the employers that have messages from the students themselves thanking us for giving them this big opportunity, thanking EU, European Union, thanking Belize Botanic Garden, thanking the Place Jungle Lodge for this opportunity that we have given. And for that, for me, I mean, um, to change a person's life like that is just incredible. Well, at first, um, when I came to this course, I didn't have much education. I only went to primary school. I did not go to high school. I was too much of troublemaker but now being here at the course um, I really realized that I need to further my education I was planning to take night classes so do high school and stuff because um, I want to also do um, studying about pest, pest control I want to be able to be a botanist in the future my ultimate career goal is to be a, a botanist and a conservationist and gardening is a nice, is a good first step. Horticulture itself is a nice step to, to grow in botany. And, and it will affect my, my career, in my future career because I would say that you know, in the living society, in the present society, I would say, that there are many things that we don't know about. And you know, as research goes on, we get to know more plants, we get to know more species, we get to know more uses and we can say like the medicinal uses of it and the, the ornamental uses of it. There are many things that can be learned about plant and this is a good step to start. Well, our last report was done at the end of March of this year, 2014, and at that point we had trained 61 gardeners and I think about almost 60% of them had jobs. Um, some had started their own businesses. This job that I got thanks to the European Union has helped me um, contribute to my family and my father has been able to retire so that he takes a little rest and I can help them. I can help them in the family, like in the electricity, in the food and the water bills. I have two small brothers, one six, one eight, so I have to push them to finish their school and do their higher education stuff I couldn't do I want them to do it and it's helping me money wise for them to pay tuition books and stuff and it's also helping me to be very independent I guess it's a dream come true you know I never imagined myself working at the Belize Botanic Garden so thank you very much we're very grateful to the European Union and the BRDP program for making it possible because this has been a long time dream of ours to have this school. It's, it's a good opportunity, it's a nice opportunity that they have provided us. I estoy muy contenta porque él ha ido a hacer ese aprender bastante de ahí. Y ahora puedo ver que él tiene un talento que que sacar adelante y Estoy muy contenta porque he aprendido muchas cosas de ahí. Puedo ver unos trabajos que él ha hecho y, y puedo, puedo entender, puedo 
estoy muy contenta porque él ha, yo sé que él ha aprendido bastante. I'm proud of him because uh, he, he has learned what I didn't learn. He finished um, primary school, he went to high school, he went to UB one uh, half years and I didn't, I couldn't do that. I didn't do that so because things were very rough at that time. Well, I'm glad that he did that and what he learned at the Botanical Garden ooh, is getting him higher because he's, he's working for himself so I don't have to give him shillings. We applied for the BRDP2 um, through the, the EM project because we felt that we can help more rural women. Growing up in the villages, I saw a lot of young girls like to fix up, they like to do their nails, they like to do their hair, but here in PG we don't have um, a lot of cosmetologists. It's like only two that I know of. Whenever special occasions come up, they are full and they can't take you, so I decided that this would be a good um, thing to venture into. And so I always wanted to do it, but it, it was only available in the city. And it would be hard for me to study there because I have a family. And so when I saw the, um, the opportunity um, that the Y is offering, I decided to jump on it. Well, I have to say I immense thank you to me. Um, because um, they are the first ones to have brought this kind of training in Punta Gorda and in Toledo district. Um, they have made a lot of opportunities for women on a whole um, because we have only heard about these trainings. The, um, the trainings that are happening in Belize City and in Dangriga and in Cayo, but it has never reached Toledo. And so um, I cannot thank them enough for um, what they are doing. My mother had a saloon back then. Its name was Belway Saloon. The name came about because we are on Belize Highway the Western Highway, so she gave it that name. I'm from a family that is into business. My mother did business, my father did business, my grandmother did business, and so did I, right? It just came down to me, for me, I would say genetically. So um, some 40, some years I have under my belt doing business as far as not opening an official business like this, but doing pastries and cooking and what have you. My niece told me about some project other that was up here for rural women. I was referred to Miss Virginia Campbell at YWCA and that's how I got started at YWCA and I think that was in 2012, yeah, about. This building under which we sit was funded, I had a, a grant of $5,000 from them with slash the EU union that I built this building with, labor not included. And so that's how this is right where it is at the moment. Two young ladies, the Canto sisters that live in San Antonio, Cayo, they were part of BRDP1. And through BRDP1, they received training in cake decorating and sewing. And based on that training and the confidence that they built, they were able to start their own business, uh, which is very successful today. So under BRDP2, we went back, found them, found that they were, they took the skills, the knowledge that they had learned, and had ran with it and were are very successful in their village. So under BRDP2, we decided um, to assist them when it comes to business mentoring and technical support, how to have a successful business, as well as providing them with financial resources in the form of a $22,000 grant. Because of the skills that they learned and the business they started, they were both able to build their own houses. Um, and in their house, they had a designated area for their, to do their cake decorating and their sewing. What we are offered was an actual dedicated space where they can have customers come in. Y estoy muy contenta porque nos han dado ese, um, esta casa que vamos a comenzar a trabajar, a poner um, cake, vamos a hacer vestidos de damas y en nuestro futuro estamos pensando poner como telas, zip, cosas de costura y de pastel para vender y un poco del turista. Con este estoy muy agradecida, gracias. Pues cuando yo comencé, era pocos con, con la familia comencé. 
después con la familia de ellos, ellos anduvieron diciendo para los aldeanos y después poco a poco ellos me comenzaron a reconocer que, con, que yo costuro y después el mismo tiempo ellos iban allá en, en otras aldeas me recomendaban y así es que comenzaron a conocer nuestro trabajo con este proyecto he ido adelante porque me ha beneficiado porque en el comienzo yo no podía mucho con el trabajo por el tiempo y con el, los con el con el grant con la máquina con las con ese y el training que nos han dado, pues nosotros hemos ido escalando cada paso con eso. Y con eso me ha beneficiado en mi familia. Y he, he, he beneficiado porque he ayudado a mi esposo con este. While the local economy of Hopkins has grown increasingly dependent on tourism, so too has many other communities in Belize. The industry supports one in four jobs, and the BRDP2 project also achieved substantial improvements in working conditions for Belizeans employed in tourism. Nine tourism sites were rehabilitated, five tourism markets were constructed, and food and arts and craft suppliers received grant funding to upscale their enterprises. Critical health and safety training was also provided for tour guides and rangers. Recently, we signed into um, into law the health and safety standards for archaeological parks, which are a set of standards, minimum standards that we should adhere to, just to provide an element of safety for for the visitors at at these archaeological sites. We look at Lamanai, for example, where we are working on the docking facility, and the docking facility will ensure will ensure safety for people getting on and off the boat since Lamana is accessible by river, by boat, and also have handrails and so on as part of the, the docking system just to ensure, ensure safety. Um, we are looking at the, the visitor center at, uh, at Altunha, which is another important component of this project. It, uh, it is a building that has been on site for, for about 10 years, and so we are, we are completing this building. Um, in designing the interior of the building, the interpretation of the building, it will tell the story of Altunha. But not only directly the story of Altunha, but more from uh, to create the, the ability for people of diverse ability to access the visitor center. So when you look at the design, it has it has been redesigned to have uh, handicap ramps. The interior will be designed so that you can have uh, a television monitor. It could be uh, you will have some audio visual aspect to it. So even if you're um, vision impaired, you can still hear an audio, or it can, it can have some tactile element that you can touch something and feel something to interact with the site. We will have some rescue packages which will be stationed at the cave sites to be used in case of emergency. We even have, in the case of um, the Nohochchen Archaeological Reserve, um, they will have um, a rescue kayaks placed um, as part of the, uh, a part of the site infrastructure to provide rescue uh, ATV to extract an individual who may have some difficulty um, along the trail or within the archaeological park. Also, in meeting the EU's objective, uh, especially in the area of health and safety, we are also engaged in ensuring that our park staff, as well as key uh, stakeholders, which are the tour operators and tour guides, have some element of training, especially in the area of search and rescue, cave rescue, and that sort of thing. So I look at the beneficiary of this project as more the entire tourism industry. Whatever we do at these sites enhance the entire tourism package. When it comes to the safety regulations, especially like what we went through yesterday, which was a cruise ship day, you know, just giving an example on that one, is that El Castillo is getting overcrowded, doesn't have actually something to be managed or regulate how many people to go up at once at the site to keep it on a safety regulations, to keep it more safe. As what I noticed yesterday, we had up to three groups of three groups of cruise ship, which each group of cruise ship had over 30 people. Remember, we don't have railings up there, we don't have anything, so it's something we try to keep it natural, but we need the help too. As guides, we are trying our best. As rangers, they are trying their best. One fell already from the temple. We as guide, we good thing I had I have training from the fire department. 
most of us, and then most of us have different type of training, you know, we could have handled it. The BRDP2 project has also financed larger scale infrastructural upgrades. More specifically, the access road to one of Belize's most culturally vibrant communities, Hopkins Village in the Stan Creek District, received a major facelift with the paving of 4.5 miles of road. Villagers who have had to cope with impassable roads during the rainy season are now very excited about the economic opportunities that are now flowing their way. This road is in since 1971. I remember the day. <laughs> I remember the day when the road was finished and since the road into Hopkins is finished it's not an easy it was not easy traveling through it it was always in a bad condition as a business owner we became a member of ETIA Hopkins branch and we start lobbying start talking about how we can get the road to be fixed back like the way it used to be or better and we had many meetings and you know and uh, went to the minister and so when we heard that the project was going to start European Union uh, they were going to fund it we were very happy now we see that it's coming to be a reality I think um, the road itself is going to, to increase uh, uh, the economic boost into our community uh, very much so and that is something that we already uh, trying to get the people to be aware that because of this road we are going to be impacted with a lot more investment so they need to be pre prepare themselves to be a part of the, the, the change that the road is going to bring um, into the community which we consider to be um, a very valuable valuable um, resource. During the season like for now during the rainy season we had always had issues with flooding where the road would be um, underwater for, for, for weeks uh, with the improvement for the shore, that's, that's definitely going to improve access. The tourists usually pass going maybe um, Placentia. At worst, after Placentia Road was safe, you know, usually, but by this week, maybe we'll get more tourists and locals coming into the village and bruise up the business. With the new business, the people who are coming are saying, hey, it's going to be better for Hatsby with the road coming in because then it's going to be easier to bring in their stuff, shorter distance, better, less wear and tear on their vehicles and um, more business coming in because of the better as the road. So we're hoping now that we can get this part of portion of the road. So we will see more investors coming into the community because when you have proper uh, infrastructure, more people will come and look to invest. Okay, on behalf of the residents of Hopkins Village, I would like to thank the European Union for providing us with a, with a road and also to begin uh, a relationship that we think is going to be an ongoing one to help to improve the lives of the people within our community. Thank you once again. The BRDP2, in seeking to implement a holistic program to bolster rural economic growth, also funded the upgrade of several market facilities. They approached the European Union for grant funding to uplift this place. And so in few, or oh, last year, last year this, this began uh, just over a year ago, the renovation of this parking lot, the, the post office parking lot, and the parking lot in the Garden City Market area, and, uh, and also the, the Civic Center. The main thing, uh, we are eager to come over here because we feel that it will be much better for the vendors, much more sanitary, much more attractive, easier access by the public, you know, and the, also the public servants uh, who, who work around here would have easier access to their vegetables and fruits and clothes, whatever they, they need to purchase. We're closer to where the, the hub is, the, um, the bus terminal also, this is the hub. This is where the, the, the crowd, the walking pedestrians are, and that's a benefit for me. Close to the bus stop, it will be okay. They could jump off the bus and get what they come to get and go back and get home early to do what they, you know, if they need to cook, they got the thing. Cook. 
apropiado está mejor para poder vender y la gente lo ve más bueno, adecuado para mí, está mejor. A... There was some time ago or before we had potholes, some sort of potholes, so when it rained you had little puddles of water settling here and there. We're not going to have that anymore. There's a nice clean surface, water is going to be run off quickly, so it's going to be generally clean, um, healthy, and in the end it's beautiful. Well, this will be the first time we will have on a market here in Benke, because the one that usually people go and buy is there at San Ignacio, at Cayo. Usually everybody goes and buy over there. So we will have more advantage for us that everything that we take out over here, our same people would buy it, and then we'll have people from other places that will come and buy over here. Actually, the project is almost over uh, more than half a million dollars. Uh, it's close to $650,000, so it's, it's a very big project, and I know that um, as you see the video, well, you will see that it's a, it's a nice building that we are constructing, and I hope that the Benquenios will take pride on it and they will make the best use of it, which is what we want. The community of Benque Viejo, I know I've been around and been talking with quite a few of them and uh, they are very thankful. They are look, looking forward for this project and on behalf of my community, I really want to thank the European Union for funding this project. I mean, I want to thank them because this we will have a lot of benefits, especially the people from here, from Benque, people from Sokot, because majority of us, we usually used to go every Fridays, Saturdays, we used to go to the market at San Ignacio. Now we don't have the, we don't have to go way far over there. We can just come to our market and then we will be having the same stuff. We decided to, to seek funding from different organizations in order for us to construct a new market because what we had, we had people who would be there on a daily basis selling uh, what we call the permanent vendors and then we also had the people that would come on the weekends the temporary vendors, no? Um, that they would just come on Fridays and Saturdays to sell. But basically, um, most of them were just selling on the beer, on the beer floor, on the beer ground. I really appreciate it a lot and I give them thanks where they um, do need money to build this market because first, we don't have the um, cement. It's loan and muddy when it rains, but now it is um, very good because we have the, um, the um, floor. Before they build this market, maybe like 1,000 to 1,500 people come and buy the market. But right now, as it is market, like 3,000 to 4,000 people come and buy. Um, I think uh, presently we have, with the permanent and temporary vendors, we have about 100, between 120 and 150 vendors per week coming at the market. Before the new market was built, that was about around, it was about 100 people. So it has increased. Um, so much over the, over the years since that new market has been built. No? The Maya people come for PG, for selling vegetables. Sometimes the people come for Corozal, they come for um, Honey and Cayo, for sale. I think the market are benefit people because then like, they have more, sec more security for your, for your stuff then. They have no kind of security. Yeah. It's a bit kind of hard for first, all right? But then afterwards, people are used to it. But what I tell you is if you walk away, Two, three miles for get a little extra well. The same thing you could do for the market. The finest stuff in a Chinese, right? They say they're not going far because okay, Chinese have vegetables too. But then like what I tell you, if you put an onion at $2 and in you know, the market and in Chinese at $2.25, I would prefer to buy the, or find the cheaper one, right? Then you could see it. Pues posiblemente pienso que al principio va a haber un poquito de, o sea, va a ser un poco guiar despacio porque Pues el, el lugar donde está ubicado el mercado no es directamente un lugar eh, céntrico, es un lugar que no está en un lugar, eh, no, no tiene una ubicación buena ahorita, porque el, lo, lo céntrico está aquí. Entonces pienso que va a ser un poco de espacio, pero posiblemente la gente pueda llegar con el tiempo. Here, I sell, I sell live it here, but PG, no business there. Me, I sell PG too, but no, no business there. That's why he come here, sell. I pay the passage expense, but you have to come because I got my child. And every, every, everyone, he want money for their school. Uh, I got seven child. That's why he come here. Expense, but you have to come here. When you rain, no sell. Mm -mm, no sell. The decision was made by the um, 
government of Belize um, in union with the, um, together with the European Union and Public Works and they found it necessary for us to have a market instead of having all our vegetables and things being sold on the ground around the park. For us here, I think we will have to become accustomed to it because everybody here is already used to going around the park and picking up their stuff. I think the community um, appreciate the market, will make use of it and we have great hopes for independence to grow and grow and grow. This is a very crucial, critical project to this community. In terms of uh, cost effectiveness, we cannot replace human health. Uh, and, and so uh, I believe that this is a well overdue um, project for this particular community. I work closely along with the town council, which is the mayor and the the deputy mayor and they were the ones who were about with this thing and we are trying to get a new market for the past years. Maybe about 10 years I think. They are trying, I, I just hear, I just hear, I just hear until finally when they told us that they have some European Union coming in and they said they would lobby for that so we would see what, how far we would get and that's when they called us in. We really need a new market. That's all the years that we were selling here, the 10 years that we were selling here, we had to sell along the, the, the still along the, the road. Well, if we have a stall, then we can, we can bring more stuff and we don't have to take it back and have a storage at our, at our home. We can keep some of the things here at the market so we don't have to be hauling it back and forth. And by the time we bring it and bring it out and take it back, it's going to be maybe spoiled or bruised, so we cannot sell it the next time. Right now we're selling like two days a week. But later on, once we have a stall where we can keep our stuff, we want to sell at least three or four times a week. Revenue will definitely be upgraded for the, for the, for the uh, municipality itself. And as a matter of fact, it will be more or less state of the art um, venue. So obviously there might or there is the possibility of an increase in revenue by something in the neighborhood of 10 to 15 percent. This project is in the neighborhood of eight to nine hundred thousand dollars. It's not easily come across. So on behalf of the citizens, I would like to thank the European Union for assisting us with this particular project. The BRDP2 project has also achieved major improvement in access to health services through enhanced neonatal and maternal services as well as strengthened vector control. One of the beneficiary communities is the village of San Narciso in the Corazon district. One of the major um, services that we offer here in the community hospital is the maternity ward. As you know, um, at the moment uh, before we had only five beds, we had to duplicate the amount of beds now. Now we have 10 beds here in maternity ward, not including those of pre-delivery and the two beds for delivery, which is one of the, um, the new um, equipment we got from the EU, and uh, as you can see, which is going to help us immensely. No? In the past, the numbers of delivery were very reduced. Right now we're ending up with a, a number of deliveries going to 30 to 40 deliveries per month, where we're doubling the amount of numbers that we're seeing and of course, not only maternal ward, but also MCH, maternal and child health, where it's pre-delivery, the prenatal care. We've now been seeing the mothers coming on a regular basis, where now our pop Mennonite population started being booking early, the first trimester, the second trimester, which is our main goal. Because the earlier we detect the mother, <clears throat> the earlier we can control the, the mother and detect any uh, special attention that the mother needs. Also, all the villages where they have their rural health nurses, our quality of control, prenatal control. Obviously, they don't be coming to Corozal Hospital every month. So we have specific nurses in specific areas, logistically um, stationed, so that the mothers can easily access the health service. So what they do is they, um, they come here to do their blood tests. And when, once they come to the blood test, the MCH nurses try to show them the, the environment and how we, what, we, what we offer and what we give as, as a maternal and child health service. 
So um, they're already aware, they already know the process, they already know what they, know what they need to go through. So they go through their eight months control, and then on their last month, they do a close control with our nurses here in Corozal, in which we have a very big service offered to us for the villages, as far as Sartaneja, and as close as, as let's say, in San Narciso and Libertad and those places, Caledonia as well. Since March last year, I started um, training as a community health worker for the village. Before that, I was a stay-at-home mom, but then with the training, we get different training every month or um, as often as that training come up. Now, I'm happy because I can go out with all the, the security and go out and check the, the people's pressure and glucose without giving um, bad readings. And well, I think that's good and I also enjoy most of what I do is not really on the um, curative part because like I tell them, I am not a nurse or a doctor. I, um, what I enjoy doing most is like giving lessons, teaching them what to eat, for, especially for the diabetic persons. And when it comes to, um, to mothers, I always carry my flip charts with me. For me, it is very important that we have um, um, health workers because for us, to do a pregnancy test, we to Corozal is difficult because we have to pay taxi and go early and just here, just a text or call, go to her house or she comes and that's more easier or to check our, our pressure reset and just call she or go to her house is so far more closer than going with Corozal. We, as pregnant women or persons with diabetes or something else, trust in them. The workshops and the training benefit not only me, but my entire community, because I can help anyone that comes here. Maybe not the, I will not, I cannot cure them, but for that while, if they have a, a, wound, a wound or something, a cut, I can do something to prevent we're getting worse meanwhile they arrive at the hospital and what what um, what really makes me um, glad is that we can also avoid a lot of uh, stillbirths and also complications during pregnancy because of this training. Sí, dos veces me va pegando y aquí pero la vez pasada no fue tanto, rapidito me pasó. Esta vez sí, sí me sentía un poco débil porque no podía ir a trabajar. Somos cinco, todos, pero a ellos no les ha afectado el dengue, solo a mí. Solo a mí es que me ha caído el dengue. A ellos no, ellos están bien. Pues yo cuando me pega paludismo me agarra dolor de cabeza, dolor de hueso, frío. Solo acostada quiero pasar, no me da hambre. Una vez cuando estaba embarazada del niño. Yeah, at the moment we have four positive cases here in the district for malaria. Okay. And what we've been doing is house spring, indoor house spring, in which we sprayed 10 localities in the month of June. Okay. And we are also doing ULV spring since June. Because as soon as the rainy season starts, then we start doing doing um, spring to control the infestation of, of mosquitoes here in the district. During the past two years, we had about roughly 75, 80 cases. That's for 2012, 2013, compared to 2014, in which we have only four, four cases from January up to July of this year. What has contributed to this drop is, as I mentioned before, the drainage system here in the here in the village okay, and the spring that we do. At the market facilities, consumers need to be assured that the products sold to them meet acceptable standards of quality. It is a win-win situation since vendors who are able to achieve international benchmarks are also able to make inroads into regional and international markets. 
The Belize Bureau of Standards is the key link in this chain which connects the producer with the consumer. They too are included in BRDP2. When the Bureau has originally submitted a concept note to the BRDP2 uh, and the, the, the concept note hinge on uh, the importance of improving um, the quality of life, the quality of life of Belizeans and to ensure that uh, we assist in helping out small businesses, the micro and small businesses in, in developing goods and services um, so that they could improve uh, their lifestyles um, uh, so that a product produced across the country is marketable and not only marketable in Belize but marketable in the region or in, or in, in CARICOM and in, in any international market. Well, the current project under the Belize Rural Development um, Project 2 is to develop and establish a national metrology laboratory for the country. Um, metrology is one of the pillars of quality infrastructure and quality infrastructure includes standardization, metrology, testing and quality. Uh, this is important not only for the firm but it's important for uh, consumers in general because we also have the responsibility to ensure that goods and services that are produced in the country uh, are safe and healthy um, to consumers and that they are also uh, safe and healthy for the environment. If you look at um, bleach, uh, there is an, an established standard for bleach uh, at the national level and, and um, the Bureau sets the rules, the guidelines, the specifications for bleach to be produced in the country to meet certain specifications. The lab itself has the ability to, will have the ability to measure, to test um, their equipment, their, their volumetric flask, their pipettes, uh, thermometers. We will have that ability to, to calibrate their equipment so that uh, whenever they are producing that the measurements that they take are accurate. Well the project will fund two things, the equipment and the building. The equipment is to the tune of 1.1 million Belize dollars and the physical infrastructure for the installation of the labs is 2.5 million Belize dollars. So total roughly about 3.6 million Belize dollars. Well, we expect that construction should start no later than Jan January of next year, 2015, and it should take roughly between 15 to 18 months to complete. The BRDP2 funded a, a mission to bring a consultant to Belize to develop a quality management system for the laboratory. And implementing this laboratory system will enable us to get accredited, which will prove our competence in the, our testing activities. Well, the consultancy was for one month, so we had an expert here. Um, developing all our documentation, giving us training, um, documenting necessary procedures. So we're hoping to get accredited um, in the next, hopefully in the ne within the next year. Um, and well, well I, I guess from, from there then the sectors would be able to benefit from having their testing performed at an accredited laboratory. In some cases, we have to outsource testing or companies have to outsource the testing to a reference laboratory outside the country. And now we would have an uh, accredited food testing lab within the country. Um, once, once we reach that, that stage, we would have a food testing lab that's accredited within the country and able to provide that um, support for the certification process. We're very uh, grateful because it's important, uh, it's important for us to maintain market access and trade is important for agricultural development. Um, so uh, for us, it's a significant advancement also to be able to demonstrate our technical 
competence to, to, to our trading partners and, and to the world. So we currently certify fish and fishery products, agro-processing products including um, pepper sauces, The BRDP2 also provided support for visionary industry expansion to meet the growing demand for more diverse meat products. This has opened up prospects for a new export commodity from Belize. This dimension of the project takes into account the need for built-in resilience to adverse conditions associated with climate change. Today, we are launching three projects, namely building resiliency through fruit production and human resource development in three communities in the Belize district to be implemented by the National Creole Council. Small, small ruminant production by rural women in four communities in Belize River Valley to be implemented by LINK, Ladies Involved in Nature and Knowledge Women's Group. And the expansion of local fowl and egg production in Belize district for increased income generation by the Belize Local Fall Association. The total value of these projects being US $187,223, with the regional fund for the implementation of Ecodirt contributing US $134,898. Indeed, we are thankful for this donation, and we expect that the participants will not just use this as something that we could get now and we could get again and again. We would like to receive a good start and continue on from there. The name of the project is Building Resiliency Through Food Production and Human Resource Development in three communities in the Belize District. The three communities are Hattieville, Flowers Bank, and Willows Bank. Under the food security, what is involved is the establishment of 50 vegetable gardens in these three communities that I mentioned, and as well, the establishment of four vegetable gardens in four primary schools in the area, right? And we, take, we believe that through the um, establishment of uh, vegetable gardens in primary schools, we will be able to reach children and young people and that we'll be able to um, encourage them to become involved in agricultural production at an early age, while at the same time be able to contribute to things like the school feeding program. We have in Belize the two-third of the pie. The two-third of the pie, I always, I've been repeating what my uh, Minister for Rural Development says, I admire him very much, he said we, they said our poverty is like 32% in the Belize district. But he said we have the land and the people, and that's two thirds. All we need is the other third, a little finance. And we're so thankful for that finance today. The funding is in the range of 48,000 US dollars. And the beneficiaries, as I mentioned, will be 50 families from three communities receiving backyard garden. The beneficiaries will be four primary schools, which will involve about 400 children. And then again, indirectly, the families of these children will also be beneficiaries of this project. The fact that there is little sheep and goat in the country, I saw the potential for um, marketing as a, as a huge, huge potential in marketing because um, there is limited sheep and goat in this country. Uh, I know about, I'm also aware of the Mexican demands for, for these um, products as well. No? Uh, again, for ladies, um, they are small animals, no? so um, it's easier for ladies to handle. Um, even their kids can get involved because they are small animals. No? And so um, my kids, they, most do, they do most of the um, caring for my, for my um, for the sheep and goat. No? They are milk and everything. So I see, I see that's something that um, could benefit the youths and also the, the women. No? Right now, I am unemployed, but my husband, he's working, so I'm the one who is taking care of the sheep. And I think it still will be beneficial because it can help in some kind of way with whatever bills we can pay or even my children, them going to school. I have two kids. I have a seven-year-old and a four-year-old. 
Okay, we have 20 ladies from the group. We have some from Scotland Half Moon. We have from Isabella Bank, Bermuda Landing, and Double Head Cabbage. Um, the project is sponsoring us with one acre of land. We are getting four sheep and two goats for some of the ladies who don't or don't trust to take care of the goat then they will be able to get five sheep and one ram um, we are also getting the fencing one acre of fencing the shelter for the sheep a water tank for the water supply i see this project benefiting all the people who produce sheep and goats in here because um, the housing is um it's of a superior design no? um, it, it allow for for a sanitary um, housing and um, living condition for the sheep and the goats um, um, also efficiency in cleaning and um, water use. No? You have to use a lot of water to clean the house because it's, it's a static floor, so all the manure and, and urine go right through the floor. Uh, and you can also collect the manure easily from below the flooring. Um, we are also getting a, um, slash, um, a processing shed where, whereby we will, because 15 ladies will be getting sheep and 15 will getting the sheep house, but the other five will be working in the processing shed. So. The five that will be working in the processing shed will rotate so every time they go they can make their own money from that as well. From the goat they will be making the milk and the cheese and also dressing the um, sheep and the goat. Um, right now I have 12 sheep and with the help they will assist me with six more, five female and one male and a goat. I guess if all the ladies ain't get, I um, mean, be about between 50 to 100 goats to keep up with the market. Well, I would like up to 75 head of sheep. And um, by reaching that goal, if you had good breeding sheep, that shouldn't take you long. At least you can get almost three set of sheep per the year and most of the sheep that i raise mostly have twins twins or three babies i hardly have sheep that had one kid sometimes they have four but very rare when they have four right now with the with what we are doing we have supported five different projects we have one in tilapia production which was successful we have one in ecotourism development that was already uh, those two are already implemented. Right now we are about to implement three other sub-projects. One is with the local fowl production because the, the rural people say that they have a very lucrative market with the Asian community. So they are producing local and the ECADERT is supporting this, this movement through the assistance of the Taiwanese government. The other project that we are working with in the area is the small ruminants production. Small ruminants are goats and sheep. And we have uh, a group here that is targeting three different communities, Scotland Half Moon, Isabella Bank, and Ber Bermuda Landing. They will work in, the, in, that, in those three villages. And we want this project to extend to the entire district and possibly in the future to extend to the entire country. So I would like to see more of these projects in our community because Cookie Tree is a very big community. It's one of the largest community in the, in the um, River Valley area. And this is the only project that is here for us. So we'd like to see more of these projects here in this village. We are trying to find a market that could sustain wood carving because this is the home of wood carving. And not only me benefit from it or me and my family benefit from it. The young guys, like I explained, that is around me right now, they benefit from it. Single parent benefit from it. Daniela, one of the teachers, she's from Bolivia and she, she, she knew what the people they want out there. I don't know where you want in your house. I don't know how your house design. So she know how for their house design. So she just go and like enhance, okay? This is an infinity. But what this infinity will do to you is just a remembrance of something that never ends. But then she showed me that if we open it and we turn it into a candle holder, you could use it. And this is what opened up my knowledge that we got to uh, make things that people will have use of and not just a dust collector. You know, most people are looking for something that has a function. 
you know, for instance, that bowls sell a lot and that people could use it, you know, for whatever purpose they want. And again, the line of product that make it the same product in different sizes because that's what people are looking for. Yes, I did went in to make like seven new pro um, products and they were successful on the market. That would be, we went into um, making napkin holders, paper towel holders, um, bangles, earrings, and it was from local stuff that we have right here. We didn't have to go and import anything, like the, the, um, the, the wood we make, the bracelet and bangles, the coconut shell we make, the complete jewelry, maybe the set for your ankle, bracelets and necklace and stuff like that. Suppose you like one, or you, uh, or you know another friend that really want one. You understand? Or a company say, you know, or a gift shop say, you know, what man likes it then. And they are, they, they, they are, they are um, valuing this at like something like about 400 billion. This is what they also teach us how to, to um, price our piece, how to manage certain things because majority of us out here because the wood is right here. You see how we got the wood right here? You understand? It? We could just pick up a piece of wood and, and, and make something. But then on the end of the day, if we know value how much it costs, if we get it out of the bush, how much it costs with, with gas, every different thing, you understand? It? And we go and just sell it for a hundred dollars because we want hundred dollars, we are losing. And this is where they catch the industry right now here because there are a lot of people not they value the piece. They not they value their work. And then it end up that they just want to put food on their table and they know they value the piece and then they want to up on the end of the air. I can't even buy one bicycle to go to work. The beneficiaries of the BRDP too are grateful. Just like again, once again to thank the European Union who sponsored the upliftment and the construction of our new market. I think the money was well invested. I think that we can see the, the benefits of this market. This has been six years of work to get to this point. Although the Bureau has been a government department since 1997, but we are at a critical juncture in our development and we are very pleased that the government and the BRDP too uh, recognize the importance of the department and see it as beneficial to the national development of the country. On behalf of my family, the committee, the market committee, um, the vendors, we would tell the European Union big thank you because it's a project we were waiting for a long time and they are the one who assisted us and we know that we will take care of what they have implemented or what they have given us today. We would be more we would appreciate that very much.